Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. Just put all my breakfast on to cook. Uh, get ready to do some squats. People are saying, what are you going to eat for breakfast today? What's your pre-workout? Uh, I've got chicken breast in the oven, and I have brown rice, refried beans, and stir-fried vegetables in the rice maker. Uh, so I've got a good balance of carbs, protein, electrolytes, all that sodium. Yes, I eat sodium before I train. Absolutely beneficial. So, on to uh, the topic, closed grip bench press. Why do I prefer the closed grip bench press for general strength buildup uh, compared to the wide grip bench press? Uh, good question, because I've had people ask that, they're like, why are you closed gripping right now? <laughs> Even for your daily Bulgarian press, you're doing it six days a week, why aren't you wide gripping? Uh, number of reasons, number of reasons. Uh, I happen to agree with Paul Carter on this. Paul Carter does the same thing. He's a legitimate 500 pound raw bench presser. In comp, uh, he does close grip most of the year. He's a big believer in this too. I agree with the exact same philosophy. Uh, it simply comes down to the fact that you have to move the weight further so you get similar muscle stimulation with a slightly lighter weight. Because you add several inches to the range of motion uh, versus a much wider grip, it allows you to get similar levels of muscular stimulation, strength, everything else, development with a slightly lighter weight. And the reason that lighter weight is important is that it has to do with beating up your joints and things like that. It has to do with that because truth be told, taking 20 pounds off for the same amount of work you do just puts less compressive stress on your wrists and everything else when you're pressing. And that's not a big deal for smaller guys. Most of you smaller guys who are starting out, you're in your first year or two of training, it isn't gonna matter that much meaning you're not putting a lot of stress on there. Most of you guys aren't benching even close to 300 pounds for, for reps or anything else, right? You guys are still trying to, in that first year, you're just trying to get to two plates aside for reps. You're trying to get to 225 for reps. You're not gonna see a substantial difference there in terms of that, because your connective tissue and joints are still adapting so fast, and your workloads are so moderate that it's just not a big deal. But for people who finish through that novice phase, I like to see the wider grip or the close grip for general buildup. You know, and close grip is about shoulder width apart. None of this bodybuilder stuff where you're turning in and just damaging your wrists. Your hands need to be far enough apart to where the bar can touch your chest without your hands touching your chest, right? You don't want them getting in, in the way of the range of motion because the other stuff you do just hurts your wrist, puts extra strain on it, even with a lighter weight, you're forced to use a really light weight. Uh, and it's just nonsense. So we're talking about the real close grip bench press to where your hands are far enough apart that the entire bar can touch your chest without your hands, your thumbs, anything else getting in the way. Uh, so what you have there is that it's just easier on you overall. It's easier on you overall in terms of recovery versus volume that you're doing. And the other thing to consider there is that you are less likely to get a shoulder injury. The wider your grip goes, just the, the harder it is on your shoulder joints, the harder it is on your rotator cuffs. And that's okay for short periods of time, uh, and sometimes even long periods of time. But the thing is, when you're going through general buildup, and you might be in a phase where you're doing extra work to strengthen all that rotator cuff work, all your band work, stuff like that, it's simply easier on them to handle because you're not throwing huge amounts of volume at the wide grip and you're doing all your work with a closer grip. It puts less strain on the shoulder joint. That's gonna give you a lower chance of injury. Also, again, it's teaching you to, again, do a longer range of motion. You get better joint angle specificities, things like that out of it. Um, the difference is wider grip is better for demonstrating strength. Like when you want to show off how much you bench press, whether it's just a casual thing, whether you're doing it on camera, or whether it's at a powerlifting meet, uh, the wider grip is just going to give you better leverages because you are reducing the range of motion. Uh, and if you go check yourself, you'll understand if you were to go get under a bench, do a closed grip and just measure your lockout, have someone do it with a tape versus a wider grip, the wider you go, the shorter the, the travel goes that you have to move the bar. You're moving the bar a shorter distance. It requires less energy, less force to do that. So the wider grip is better for showing off strength. The closed grip though, as I said, it's better for, uh, again, avoiding injuries, easier to handle the workloads, everything else, because again, the amount of stimulation you get versus the weight on the bar is different. Most people are gonna take five to 10% off. Uh, unless you train closed grip year round, then they're gonna be very close. But you, you, if you go back and you train the wider grip, it'll start accelerating above your closed grip. When you first go to it, if you've done nothing but closed grip, it might even go down slightly. Uh, 
but again, it's because you're not used to the motor pattern. Now, a lot of people will argue, well, the closed grip is purely a tricep exercise. The wider grip is more pec. Uh, when you look at it, that appears to be true in terms of stretch on the muscle, but it's not necessarily true in practice. Meaning, it, it, that sounds good. Yeah, the triceps get a little bit deeper stretch at the bottom, slightly more stretch at the bottom. The chest might seem to get slightly more stretch in some cases with the wider grip, but we're talking about minimal differences in terms of that. And when you start thinking about it from the perspective of overall development, it really doesn't matter that much. I think people way overthink this stuff. When they start looking at big compounds, they really get too caught up in, well, this one this had 3% or 5% less EMG activity in this muscle and 5% more in this one, so it might be better for that muscle. You know what? That doesn't seem to matter that much in practice. They're all primary movers. And usually, as long as you are using all the primary movers in a muscle, and you're using enough workload on it, those muscles are probably going to get as much stimulation as they can actually adapt to irrespective of which minor variations you pick and lifts. Oftentimes these minor variations just have to do with, with small performance differences. Uh, they might be useful to break up the monotony of training and give a novel training response. But I mean, truth be told, if anyone honestly thinks, say a weighted dip, versus a, a, a somewhat wide grip bench press versus a narrow bench press. If you're doing similar amounts of workloads with similar RPEs, you're probably not going to notice a measurable difference of any of those three as far as pec uh, stimulation, tricep stimulation, as far as how much muscle they're gonna put on your, those muscles over the next six months, you're probably not gonna notice a difference unless you're doing something to de-emphasize it by the way you're training. Like if you're bouncing on the bench press or you're skipping the bottom, okay, your pecs are gonna get less activation. But so will your triceps. Um, so, <laughs> you know, there are things you could do to be silly and not perform the exercises correctly that could de-emphasize certain muscles, but if you're performing the exercise correctly through their normal range of motion, similar workloads and RPEs and everything else, you're probably not gonna see a difference. Uh, so people get too caught up in all of that. And then the other thing we get to with that is that you're looking at it in the whole context of another program. Uh, I mean, truth be told, is anyone out there, but with some exceptions, there are probably some who are, because I do know some strength athletes who only do like four exercises. There are some champion power lifters who literally do four exercises year round. They squat, bench, deadlift, row. That's what they do. <laughs> they do exist. But outside of that, most people are doing more than one exercise that works those muscles. Like, for example, I overhead press every day. That works the chest, delts, and triceps also. So, I mean, a perfect example. If you're doing more than one exercise, at the end of the day, this stuff all balances out. Uh, you know, again, very rarely are people only doing one exercise. Maybe some people squat and they don't deadlift. But if you squat and deadlift, you're not getting multiple leg exercises in. So that's just another example. Most people are doing at least two exercises that work any major muscle group to a greater or lesser extent in their training. And I'd say most people actually do more. A lot of us don't who believe in training minimalism and just focusing on a handful of lifts at any given time. But even then, you're usually doing at least two exercises that work each muscle in some way with, with a few exceptions. So in the grand scheme of things, this stuff balances out a lot better anyways. And people get way too caught up in the, you know, that somehow changing four inches on each side they're gripped with, that all of a sudden their triceps are gonna get massive and their chest is gonna shrink or something silly like that. It doesn't work that way, guys. These muscles are all still primary movers in it. So we're just talking about minor variations that are gonna shift the emphasis, maybe slightly change recovery, maybe slightly change range of motion. Uh, things like that because maybe you're trying to, again, get, get more workload or a slightly lower injury rate, maybe less strain on a, a certain joint. That's oftentimes all we're seeing. You're not going to see a noticeable difference in overall development. Uh, and again, it, it just depends on what you're trying to do. And I'm not saying even me, I might not go over to a wider grip or my Bulgarian down the road after I have rebuilt my strength base, after I can close grip a respectable amount of weight regularly, then I might switch over. But for general buildup, I think the close grip is just a better exercise due to being slightly easier to recover from and being easier on the shoulder joints. And that's it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.